West Virginia podcast with Brandon Phoenix, a.k.a. I Also Hate Pitt. Jeremy J.N. Fiend Phoenix. Right there. He's in the building. We're going to talk about the hog mollies today. We're going to talk about the offensive line and the defensive line in this edition of Know Your Mountaineers. Let's start with the offensive line. Last year, we called him Greer's guard. We can call him Greer's guard 2K18 if you want. All we know is these are the guys who are going to make holes and keep people off of Will's back. You all right over there, Jay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just <laughs> fixing my setting for the second week in a row. Go ahead. <laughs> Starting on the offensive line, who do we have, Jay? We got Kajus. We got big number 55, Mr. All Big 12, Mr. NFL, here I come. Big man, Kajust. Yadney. Yadney was called a first-round draft pick by Russell Shell when he was a freshman. Jeremy saw him, immediately said, who is that guy? And then he's, he's built weight. He's built technique and experience in that time. Now, he's missed a lot of time because of injury, but he's fully healthy, had an excellent season last year, looking to build on that, recognized as a preseason first team, all Big 12. And on his other side, you got six foot seven, 300-pound Colton McKivitz. Colton McKivitz is second team all Big 12. How do you like that for your bookends on your offensive line? And what number is Colton McKivitz wearing, Jeremy? Now, nah, I'm going to let you drop it on him. <laughs> number 67 for Colton McKivitz. Uh, Brandon is wrong. It's actually number 53. Come on. And Colt McKivitz is a good, good offensive lineman. A lot of people who are worried about what we're going to do because we're all focused on the skilled positions have not recognized the talent that we have there. Then we get to the trenches. In the middle, we have Matt Jones. Who? Matt Jones. Don't act like you don't know that name. He was the starter last year. Matt Jones uh, is not necessarily going to be the starter this year because Jacob Butchagrassi, was yep. the guy who was tabbed to be starter, who people believe was going to win the job last year until he got injured. He gets injured. He loses that spot. Matt Jones comes in and plays that position. And Matt Jones had an up and down year. He had some really good times. He had some times that weren't so great. Um, so that's, you know, we'll see who wins that battle. It's looking like it's going to be Butcher Grassi. Either way, we have, we have talent and experience at that position. That's right. Butcher Grassi at 78, Matt Jones at 79, number 79. The other guys that we have in the trench, trenches are our guards, Josh Sills, a redshirt sophomore. Sills is going to be playing with Chase Burnt behind him, also a redshirt sophomore. Completely unrelated, but I just wanted to say, Burnt. You know how many times I tried to spell this and it was right in front of me? Good luck telling that name to your Starbucks barista. The thing about the guards, and we'll talk about this in a second, um, is that... They're not fully set because even though we know what the depth chart looks like now, the Brown twins are in town yep. and they're not being accounted for. We're going to see what they can do in fall camp before we figure out where our offensive line settles out, where our offensive line shakes down completely and fully. But, but that- Josh Sills did play nine games as a freshman. Um, so he has he has that experience. And whether he starts or not, it's going to be big for, for our line to be able to rotate guys in or if somebody goes down to keep them fresh. So he's very important. Number 73, Josh Sills. Yes. And then backing up Yadne could just at the tackle position is redshirt junior Kelby Wickline. If that name sounds familiar, that's because he is related to the office, offensive line coach, Joe Wickline. So not only do you have a big kid, not only do you have a kid who's gained some experience, but he's also a guy who understands the position because he's a coach's son. And any coach will tell you they want to have coaches' kids playing, and that's what we have on the offensive line with Calby Wickline. So we're looking at Greer's guards, 2K18. We have a very capable unit. The tackles are solid. There's no question yeah, about them. That, that's a question. To sum it up real quick, um, you know, games are won and lo- lost in the trenches. And I feel like we're going to be solid. Last year, uh, the rushing game wasn't what we wanted. But hopefully this year, Wickline has them in, in order. You know, the Brown Twins coming in. I, I expect us to be a lot better. I do. They better be better because there's no yeah, – they, they have to be. They really have to be. We have to be able to run the ball. We have to be able to convert on third and shorts. We have to com- be able to convert on, on go- in goal line situations. And that it's, all starts with the offensive line. And just like it starts with the offensive line for – throw it up you it starts on the defensive line for the dogs dogs defensive line was going to be a position of strength starting in the 2018 season and then the transfers happened we lost freshman all-american lamont mcdougall we lost a starter in adam Schuler, and it really looked bleak for us not memphis but bleak <laughs> but then via the transfer market we bolstered our lineup kenny bigelow 
Big dude out of USC. Big, For, big man. Former five-star blue chip recruit who spent pretty much all of his career injured is now in Morgantown ready to rock. Wearing number 40. You see him in the middle soaking up blocks. Number 40, Bigelow. Then we got another transfer in Jabril Robinson from Clemson. And a lot of people look at a guy like that and they think, why would he transfer? Why do we want throwaways? Well, because if you look at the ACC preseason all defensive team, every single one of the defensive linemen, every single one is from Clemson. That's no, how they're loaded. They're, they're, they're absolutely loaded at defensive line. So even their throwaways, if you want to quote them throwaways, I don't quote them as that, but the guys who aren't going to start on their team are still extremely talented, and, and we are fortunate to have Jabril, number 12, here in Morgantown. No. Actually, he's number 50. And here, Jeremy, I thought you were the smart one. I guess we all make mistakes. I he's believe gonna, that. He wants to make himself felt, and he's going to be fighting. He's going to be doing a lot of fighting because we have guys who are incumbents who are coming back. We've got Reese Donahue, West Virginia native, 304 boy. We've got a lot of 304 boys actually on the defensive line. It's something that yep. I really love. But Reese Donahue, who started last year, who really seemed to come on at the end, who understood the game, he's got a high motor, doesn't quit, smart, he's tough, He's got that three or four mentality. Another year, he's bigger and stronger. He's wearing that number 46. Yeah, Reese. We got Reese Donahue. Then in the middle, we've got that Fairmont boy, one of the Stills brothers, the eldest Stills brother, the legacy re recruit who saw time last year but really didn't have much of an impact, Darius Stills. And Darius, everybody talked about him as a straight-up monster, wearing number 56 in honor of what his father wore in the professional league. In the NFL, Darius Stills is looking to make his impact, make his mark known to the entire world. He's raring to go. And the defensive line coach, um, Coach Tall, as well as Gibby, have been doing nothing but raving about what it is he brings to the table. But he's not by himself. Because on his other side is the man who actually led West Virginia in sacks last year, Ezekiel Rose. Zeke. A dude at a last chance you. He uh, had five sacks last year, but he's looking to get a whole lot more. He did not start the season. He didn't start out starting, but he came on as he learned what he was supposed to do, and the man is hungry. He's a great athlete. We all saw the punt return, and if you watch videos online, the man can dance too. He can dance. He can sing. He can return punts. There's nothing the man can't do. He and he's rocking number five. I love it so much. You call me petty. Call me, call, call me whatever you want. Zeke is wearing number five. Jabril Robinson, number 12. Number 50. Jeff Puller, who, who's a big-time player, who can be a big-time player, a lot of is potential. number 13. Last look, I always felt this way. When you see numbers like that on defensive linemen, it's fin to be nasty. I love seeing them switch to these, these receiver numbers, 13, 12, 5. I said it again. Why? Because I love it. Hopefully, it'll show on the field. What I love the most is that this is a unit that is being disrespected. It's being questioned by the fans. It's being questioned by the media. It's being questioned by the opposition, and they feel it. They have a chip on their shoulder. They know they're being called out. They look like they're up for the task. And then they're not by themselves. They also have another freshman in Mr. Miter. Big Mr. Miter. I believe he's number 74. Am I right, Jay? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a large kid. I don't imagine he's going to see a whole lot of time just because I think we're going to have a really steady, heavy rotation with guys who are um, older than him. Um, but that's something we're going to have to look out for and see, the defensive line of Gibby's dogs. That's right. Number 55, Dante Stills. We don't want to leave him out. Um, do, do we get to him? No. I don't think we mentioned Dante. I think we all you know, remember the All-American game and the flashes that he showed. He's going against All-American, and, and when he decides he wants to do something, he does it. Once again, he's wearing number 55, and we'll see if, he can, if that translates to on the field, which I feel like it will. So I'm, I'm like you, Brandon. I'm just excited to see this defensive line work. I've also said that I feel like this is going to be our strength. I, I'll but say we'll see. One thing I want to say be, before I forget, the last thing I want to say. Darius Stills did his Instagram ask me anything like everybody's doing right now. And uh, somebody asked him something about his dad. And he said that his dad told him he's better than right now. He's better that Darius is better right now than Gary was at this point in his career. I, I yes. I, well, I hope that's true. If I mean, I don't see why Gary would lie. If Gary is saying that, then we're in for a very, very oh big my. season. If, oh if that's my. true, if you if anybody's old enough to remember Gary Stills at West Virginia, he was a freak of nature. 
So that's what we have to look forward to. I really hope it pans out. The thing I like about the Stills boys is they're hungry. They're humble and they're hungry. They just want to work. They just want to eat. They just want to be great for their state, for their family, for this team. And then you've got the guys around them that also have the talent and the ability. Kenny Bigelow's got something to prove. It might be his last chance to eat. Jabril Robinson's got something to prove because he couldn't break out. Ezekiel Rose gets left out a lot of times. Nobody ever talks about Jeffrey Pooler. Reese Donahue, even though he started oftentimes the odd man out, this group is hungry. Them dogs gonna eat. Rat me, boys! We want to thank Shrinkables. Shrinkables for your sponsorship. We want to thank Swill Dog, the finest hard cider in all of the land. We want to thank Sandwich You, King of the Fat Sandwich, located on 461 High Street. And of course, we want to thank the fine people, Mr. Jamie Spears, especially at Astoric Auto of Charleston. You will not find a better deal. You will not find a better dealership than Astoric Auto. We appreciate all that you do. Hail West Virginia.